Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you here. Welcome. And for those of you watching at home, we're glad you're there. Thank you for joining us this morning. Take a moment, give a wave to each other here so we can break down some of the distance. We're very glad you've joined us. If you're here in the sanctuary, take a moment and fill in the yellow worship slip that you find there in the uh, pew rack. Put that in the offering plates on your way out. That will allow us to know of your presence and give thanks to God for it. A couple of announcements that might not appear in the bulletin. Next Sunday, we will return to the Fellowship Hall, which means we will only be able to broadcast the 8.30 service on our Facebook page. We're going to go back to the early days of the pandemic, and we're going to use my iPhone and connect it all together that way. But we can get a little bit more distance and a little bit, well, not as much distance, but a sense, better sense of community in the Fellowship Hall. So we'll return to the Fellowship Hall next week. The band will be there. We'll do all of the things that we are accustomed to doing in there. Also, next Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock, we will have the memorial service for Barbara Studwell. Uh, we'll be here in the sanctuary, but we'll also live stream it on the Vimeo site, and we will send a link out this week on how you can watch that at home or wherever you may be. So we'll send you a thing. All you'll need to do is click, and it'll take you right there. Obviously, we've been concerned about the people in Haiti. Now we need to be concerned about the people in the path of Hurricane Ida, which has strengthened to a Category 4 this morning. Uh, I heard yesterday the winds were 80 miles an hour, and this morning they're 150 miles an hour. So over the warm waters of the Gulf, that storm is really strengthening and moving quickly. So keep the people in the line of the hurricane in your prayers. We'll probably have an opportunity to do some more through PDA to help uh, victims of the uh, hurricane. So we'll keep you posted about that as we learn more. Also. There is a very great possibility that a lot of the rain that is going to move up into the Tennessee region is going to hit the exact same area where the disastrous flooding took place last week. So keep the people of, the, of Tennessee in your prayers as well. They're expecting that we'll even get some rain, which might not be a bad thing by Tuesday. So it's an enormous storm hitting on the anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on with that in the minds of those who survived that hurricane. All of that is to say that last Sunday's sermon still holds. We have got to do something to get our destruction of the planet under control. These storms are a direct result of global warming and what we have done to the planet. So let's keep thinking about that. We are glad that you are here this morning. Lots of other announcements in the bulletin. We're catching up, um, starting back up with fall programming, so there are lots of needs and opportunities available there. We're also dedicating the choir today, and I thought since we have musicians here, we should give thanks to God for them. So let's have a prayer for the band as they begin another year of worship leadership. Gracious God, for the gift of musicians, their willingness to share their talents, their leadership, in allowing us to more fully participate in worship, we give you thanks. Bless them in their work together. Bless them as they experience the presence of your spirit. Use them and use us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue with our worship of God. Good morning. It's good to be together, both everybody here and everybody at home. Um, I'm Jess Montgomery, and I'll be your liturgist today. I invite you to stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. Who may abide in the presence of God? Who may live on God's holy mountain? All those who walk blamelessly and do what is right. All those who speak truth. God has lavished us with every perfect gift from above. And the call us to live in faith through the one, Jesus Christ. Let us shout in joy. 
Friends, do not despair. God renews us by the word of truth, that we might become the first fruits of God's creation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. by the power of your spirit open our hearts and minds to receive your word that we not forget the wonders you have done nor neglect to make them known to our children nor fear to fail to tell them to the world amen the psalm for the day is a responsive reading of psalm 15 please join me in proclaiming these words of instruction and direction lord who may dwell in your tabernacle who may abide upon your holy hill those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. There is no guile upon their tongue. They do no evil to their friend. They do not heap contempt upon their neighbor. In their sight, the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn to do no wrong and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take a bribe against the innocent.
The second lesson for the morning comes to us from the letter of James we're reading in the first chapter. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved, let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. Be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror, for they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Glory be to God who gives us the word. May God write that word on our hearts, and may God and God alone receive glory, honor, and praise. If the New Testament has a counterpart to the First Testament's collection of wisdom books, that counterpart would be the letter of James. Like wisdom literature, we really don't know who authored or edited this collection. The attribution is simply James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. The audience is identified as the 12 tribes or the 12 congregations in the dispersion. They were congregations of Christians that were dispersed around the Mediterranean basin. The letter reads like the book of Proverbs, there are pithy sayings. Nearly each verse could be housed in a fortune cookie. Blessed is anyone who endures temptation. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire and the tongue is fire. You do not have because you do not ask. You could create enough bumper stickers to cover a bus just by using verses from the letter of James. But when you step back a little, and look at the overall message of James, the picture begins to come into focus. The author of James issues us a challenge to a new way of life. The words of the book may seem aimed at individuals, but the letter is being sent to faith communities. It seems that James is interested in how communities of faith live among themselves and in the world around them. The authentic believing and living to which James calls them and us begins with this. Do not substitute doctrinal understanding for faith. Casey Thornburg Sigmund reminds us there is a gap between knowledge, knowing in my mind ideas about God, and wisdom, living and acting from the soul what I know of and about God in my mind. I have known some people, and probably you have too, who know the faith, the ins and the outs, the intricacies and particulars. These are people who can hold an intelligent discussion of the details of Christianity. They have a head faith that understands and processes the claims of our faith. But that faith stays in their head and never makes it to their heart. Their lives and living bear slight expression of the faith their mind holds. It's not enough to be able to explain the Trinity if you ignore the poor. It's not enough to be able to discuss the Incarnation if you disregard the hungry. It is insufficient to be able to quote those, the entirety of Scripture from memory while failing to practice compassion and loving kindness. The letter of James tells us that such people are like those who look in a mirror and immediately forget what they look like. That would be impossible, you might say, and you would be right. But to know the faith and to fail to live the faith 
is equally impossible as well. Faith is a combination of knowing and doing. A Christian community is a congregation of knowing and doing. Be doers of the word and not merely hearers. Next, authentic believing and living is mindful of the power of speech. James teaches us, let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Do I need to remind you of the divisive power of speech that is on display in our society? Do I need to bring to your remembrance that destructive power that comes with labeling, name-calling, and derision that is practiced in our community and nation? Do I need to remind you that it's not just the words that come out of our mouths, but the words we post on Facebook that convict us? We have become accustomed to talking past one another. We are concerned about propagating our position and disregarding our partners in conversation. It is fascinating that the letter of James begins by saying, let everyone be quick to listen. The story is told of a gathering of Presbyterian ministers at an evangelism conference being led by one of the foremost authorities on the subject. The pastors were instructed to draw a symbol of the word evangelism. They went to work, and after a few minutes, the leader called them back together and proceeded to have each pastor display the symbol they had drawn. There were crosses and Bibles and hearts and lots of other presentations. The leader complimented them and then proceeded with the lecture. Wait a minute, one of the pastors cried out. What is the correct symbol for evangelism? Only a Presbyterian would act. Oh, I don't know if it's correct, the leader said, but here's what I would draw. And on the newsprint in front of the group, the leader drew an ear. Maybe we should begin evangelism by listening, he said. Listening is incredibly important to the life of a community. In listening, we value the thoughts and feelings of others. In listening, we honor the image of God in another, even one with whom we might very well disagree. In listening, we can sense the pains and frustrations, the hurts and brokenness that might otherwise go unnoticed. Once we have listened, we must take time to frame what we want to say. Too often we are quick to speak before we think. Our words can inflict pain, encourage division, feed discord. We see and hear it all too clearly in our world today because everyone walks around with a video camera. We can see and hear the racist words, the partisan words, the homophobic words that are spoken far too frequently. We can see and hear the violent words, the cruel words, the hateful words. Perhaps if we were a little slower to speak, we could do away with some of the vitriol and viciousness that passes for speech today. Maybe James was on to something when he taught us to listen more, think before we speak, and put anger away. Finally, James teaches us that Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Remember that the phrase widows and orphans means those who are powerless, those who are defenseless, those who are unable to sustain the life that God gave them without help from others. Suppose of that instead of the word religion, because that word's a very tricky word, what if instead we use the word faith? Faith that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The problem is that faith is a noun, 
According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, faith is defined as allegiance to a duty or a person, fidelity to one's promise, sincerity of intentions, belief and trust and loyalty to God, belief in the traditional doctrines of a religion, firm belief about something for which there is no proof. All of that sounds just about right, doesn't it? But the more you read the letter of James, the more you become convinced that faith is a verb. Faith is something you do. Faith is something you live. Faith is the way you act. Faith is what you speak. Faith is how you think. Faith is the foundation for values. Faith is so much more than a devotional exercise. Faith is building a house with habitat for humanity. Faith is preparing and serving a meal at United Caring Shelter. Faith is advocating fair and equal housing for all. Faith is packing food boxes at the food bank. Faith is discovering and dismantling structural racism. Faith is demolishing systemic poverty. Faith is befriending the friendless. Faith is creating a community where all are welcomed and valued and loved simply because they are created in the image of God. Faith is a verb. And when we can believe and live in this way, we can discover a new and far more authentic way of life than we once lived. Our hearts soften. Our sharp words lose their edge. Our anger dissipates. Our blood pressure drops. We begin to smile more, laugh more, dream more. When we live out our faith, we live the life God created us to live. In his book, Living Faith, Jimmy Carter tells of a group of Christian lay people involved in missionary work approaching a small village near an Amish community. Seeing a possible convert, they confronted an Amish farmer and asked him, Brother, are you a Christian? The farmer thought for a moment and then said, Wait just a few minutes. He wrote down a list of people and handed it to the lay evangelist. Here's a list of people who know me, but know me best. Please ask them if I am a Christian. It wasn't about what the Amish farmer believed. It was about how the Amish farmer lived. Authentic living and believing. Faith in action. Faith is a verb. For now and evermore. Amen. As God's people called to a new way of living, let us stand as we are able and affirm a portion of what we believe. The reconciling act of God in Jesus Christ exposes the evil in people as sin in the sight of God. In sin, we claim mastery over our own lives, turn God, God and each other, and become exploiters and despoilers of the world. They lose their humanity and people strive for honor and are left in rebellion, despair, and isolation. Why the virtuous man and religious have sought the highest good in devotion to freedom, justice, peace, truth, and beauty? Yet all the human virtue, when seen in the light of God's love in Jesus Christ, is found to be infected by self-interest and hostility. All people, good and bad alike, are in the wrong before God, and helpless without God's forgiveness. Thus everyone falls under God's judgment. No one is more subject to that judgment than those who assume they are guiltless before God, or morally superior to others. Please be seated. 
All that is good and beneficial comes to us by God's grace. Our lives are filled with blessings. Through the giving of our tithes and offer offerings, let us reach out to those uh, that are in any form of need. Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts for the work of your church. With these gifts, we dedicate ourselves to live in the truth of your word and follow your commandments with sincere hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come to our time for prayer this morning, please keep in your prayers Bobby, who has cancer, and prayers for his family. Prayers for Lisa, whose chemotherapy continues. Prayers for Wayne, who has ongoing health issues. Leslie, who has ongoing health challenges. For John, who has COVID. For those who are grieving. For healthcare workers. For all our members and friends who live alone or in residential settings. Are there prayers of thanksgiving or prayers of concern here in the sanctuary you'd like to share? Mary. For those facing eviction. The trouble with masks and having to wear this is I can't wear my hearing aids. It's just too much behind my ears, so I have to really listen closely when you're speaking to me. Rob is still writing requests that are coming in from those who are watching at home. Prayers for those in the path of Hurricane Ida. Prayers for strength for health care workers. For Angie, who is undergoing treatment for cancer. For the people of Afghanistan, our troops, and our leaders. I sent an email this week to Mohammed Hussein and our friends at the Islamic community asking if they had heard anything about helping Afghan families relocate and they have not yet but they're keeping their ear to the ground and that may be a way that one God one community can be a part of helping some of those families find some stability. Keep all of these prayers in your hearts and on your lips this week. Will you pray with me? Let us pray for the Church of Jesus Christ. Bless the Church, O God. Deliver us from self-righteousness and make us holy in every way, that all people may see you in the witness of your faithful servants. For our pastors, teachers, and ministers, hear our prayer. Bless the leaders of your church, O God, and all who minister in your name. Give them the wisdom to discern your truth, to honor your commandments, and to lead with humility. Let them walk blamelessly, do what is right, and speak truth from their hearts. We pray for the world and its leaders. Bless the nations of the world, O oh God. Guide the leaders of governments for the sake of peace. Give them sound judgment and merciful hearts, and help them be accountable for the common good. Save them from the cynicism of war. Free them from the influence of greed. Deliver them from the temptations of social power. We pray for the community in which we live. Bless our communities, O God. Help us live as friends with our neighbors and do good to one another that homes may be free of fear and families may live in peace. For children, God of light, hear our prayer. Bless children and those who care for them, O God. Protect them from harm. Give them what they need to grow in body, mind, and spirit. And provide caring adults to model for them a life of purpose and compassion. 
For the sick and those in distress, hear our prayer. Bless all who are ailing in body, mind, or spirit. Especially be with those who are suffering from severe COVID-19. Heal them all of their disease and restore them to fullness of life. For those who are judged by others, hear our prayer. Bless those who face the reproach of society, O God. For those in prison, whether innocent or guilty of crimes. For those who are ostracized due to mental disease, whether or not they pose a threat to others. For those who are homeless and those who are lost to addiction. Surround them with compassion and save them from hopelessness. God of everlasting life, for those departed, hear our prayer. We remember those of our congregation whose passing from this life to the next we will mark in the days of this week. We remember Bob Runkle, Craig Tennant, Morris Oglesby, Harry Thompson, Bill Sontag, Jim Parker. Inspire us by their witness, and may their memory continue to be a blessing. Now, compassionate God, hear the prayers we offer from our hearts in the silence of these moments. These prayers we offer to you, O God of light, through Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit, as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Listen before you speak. Think before you speak. And keep yourself from falling into anger. It sounds so simple, but it is so very hard to do. So go, and by the power of the Spirit that goes with you, listen before you speak. Think before you speak. And do not let your heart be angry. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship and empowerment of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.